Long book, and then stand up. <laughs> yeah. See how I put this a little. No, I'm not doing that. I, they asked me. They want that. We have guests. All right, find a seat and grab a hymnal. We're gonna turn to page 49 and start singing. Page 49, our great Savior. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 5. 1, 3, and 5. Page 49, let's stand up and start singing. Jesus, what a friend of sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. My Savior makes me whole. 49. Hallelujah, what a Savior. Hallelujah, what a friend. Saving, helping, keeping, loving. He is with me to the end. On verse 3. Jesus, what a help in sorrow while the billows over me roll. Even when my heart is breaking, He, my comfort, helps my soul. On five, Jesus, I do now receive him more than all in him I find. He hath granted me, me forgiveness. I am his and he is mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, what a Savior, hallelujah, what a friend, saving, helping, keep loving, He is with me to the end. Alright, page 463, All That Thrills My Soul. We'll do one, two, and three. Who can cheer the heart like Jesus by his presence all divine? True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see. Love of Christ so freely given, grace of God beyond degree, mercy higher than the heaven, oh, deeper than the deepest sea. All that thrills my soul is Jesus, He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousand in my blessed Lord I see on three. What a wonderful redemption, never can a mortal know. How my sin, no red like crimson, can be whiter than the snow. All that 
thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of ten thousands in my blessed Lord I see. All right, 487, a few pages to your right. We're going to be singing, Now I Belong to Jesus. 487. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him the power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to Him, now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Joy floods my soul, for Jesus has saved me, freed me from sin that long had enslaved me. His precious blood He gave to redeem. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Are right, you going to be seated? All right. I'm going to remind everybody, we're going to hand out some flyers. October 18th, Friday night, 19th, Saturday night, and Sunday the 20th, we have uh, my friend, Brother Soche. He's an evangelist from New Orleans, and he was a pastor for many years. Last three years, he hasn't pastored anymore. He gave up his church, and he's been evangelizing. He's coming, so you know, you know him. He's been here for many years. We look forward to seeing him October 18th. Amen? We're going to give flyers so you'll be reminded of that. Okay? Also, um, Kitty is doing much better. So thank you for the prayers. So uh, I know Christine was there this morning. Uh, we live with her. And she's making great progress. Not, not getting up by herself walking, but with aid. Able to get up and use a walker. And we have to kind of guide her. But, I mean, this is a big improvement. From two months ago, since July 10th, when she was in the hospital, really until la last week or a week and a half ago, it was really, really bad. Last couple of weeks started to turn the corner. The last visit, yeah, then what, a couple of weeks now she's been coming out of it. Really, now we could see her back to looking like Kitty. Uh, she, she planned on coming, wanted to come today, but wasn't quite, quite re yet ready. I think next week you'll see her. We'll see you next week, yeah. And uh, she tells everybody hello, and Joe sort of, they used to sat in the, in the, in the uh, drive with her. She's doing much better. She, Joe, I mean, and Joe's husband was sick. Sammy, Sammy might come, you said, with you. Well, we got to pray. <laughs> got to pray he comes. But he was sick, and he went through some operations, and through that, that's what sometimes leads them to say, I need the Lord. And cry out when you have a near-death experience. So, in that respect. All right, Brother Sean's in uh, Pennsylvania visiting his mom. She's not doing too well. She's got dementia. So that's, and her dad, his dad passed away a few months ago. 
So there's a lot going on. So we'll keep him in prayer too. And all good to see Anthony. Give Anthony a big amen. amen. He's out and back home. And thank you, Tim, picking him up. And uh, we'll stay in touch and hope all goes well. Right, sir? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, who's going to help out with the offering envelopes? John, how's that concussion, John? It's all good? Ready to play some tackle football now? No. <laughs> all right, if you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. John's going to help you out. So, a couple of birthdays, too. Got a couple of birthdays. We're going to, after the offering, we have a couple of birthdays to recognize, so we'll do that, and uh, that should be good. Also, Phil, Phil and uh, Terry, come on up. Hand these out when you come. Okay, you hear that, church? Bethany? She had a concussion pretty bad, and uh, Debbie said she's about 90% now. She's in school. It takes time. Yeah, it takes time. Pray for Beth. Keep Bethany in prayer. She has a good name to pray. Bethany. Bethany. Jesus ascended from Bethany. Bethany. Hopefully she does better. Right, Terry? Amen. <laughs> good. Okay, let's have a word of prayer for the offering. And then, uh, I don't know if we have any nursery. Th Herbie's not coming. He's working overtime. They had the shower for Aaron yesterday. And he texted me that he couldn't make it. He's working OT, but he said they had a wonderful time at the shower. So that was a beautiful experience. Praise the Lord. All right, Phil, lead us in a word, please. Thank you. That's not a big church, Lord. You don't make big churches out of this type of preaching. I'm thankful that you let me here personally. Thank you. I have a pastor, Lord, that can show me through your word, Lord, just your congregation, Lord, your sheep, that he teaches them correctly. And he's responsible for that and he takes it seriously. And thank you that he's in touch with your sheep. Pray that you would meet with us right now with this message, Lord, and have this money go where you will. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's a nice one. Amen. Okay, we have, thank you, Ashley. We have a couple of birthdays to recognize. So, Gigi, come on down, little Gigi. And Renee, since you're not going to, unless you can tell me, are you going to, you might not be in, she's with me next week, but you're going to, might not be here. So, come on up. We'll get you now. So Gigi's taller than Renee. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. She's my half sister. Wow. So Renee is on the ninth. 
And you're the first. So that is Tuesday. And how old will you be, Gigi? Eleven. Wow. Big girl. Big girl getting there. And Renee? Eighty-five. Wow. Give Renee a man. Eighty-five. 85. And you know what the beautiful thing about Renee? Not only 85, she's a lovely, beautiful woman. She goes back to the very beginning with us. When we had seven, eight people meeting in the house with Rosie and Kitty and Renee. They go back. They've been dealing with me for 21 years. 20 years. We, we love you, Renee, and um, we appreciate you. And the, she's a miracle because of her accident. A couple of years ago on Thanksgiving, her and her husband nearly died. A couple of years, they, they, they were, it was touch and go. I didn't think that Renee was going to die, um, but they thought Eddie was going to. And everybody was saying that he was going to die, and they had reason to believe that. For some reason, and I'm not, I'm not good at that, but I, I did say, I'm telling you, he's not going to die. I don't know why, because sometimes I don't, I, she asked me, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I didn't get the sense he was going to go. And he, how old is Eddie? Ninety. Ninety. He's kicking. He's and I heard he was dancing. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He couldn't walk a couple of years ago. He broke his hip. He, he was dancing. He had so many operations. Yeah, but he was dancing. Dancing. I, I, I will, no, I can't believe it. I want to see it. Come on, Eddie. Let's do it. Do the hustle. <laughs> That's the way he we do the hustle. Oh yeah, we do the hustle. That's why I met Bernard doing hustle. Wow. But he was and he was leading. All right, let's let's sing. Wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gigi and Renee. Happy birthday to you, to you, only one will not do, born again means salvation, how many have you? Did you get born again, Gigi? Did you ask the Lord to save you, Gigi? You did? How old were you about when you did that? Seven, eight? About that, yep. Yeah. And Renee, many, many years now. Since I'm about 43. Wow. It's 43. It's a long time. 43, so you were about 42 when you got saved? You were 43 years old. So he was 42 years ago. So you were 42 and he was 43 years ago. You're 85. Okay, so good. That's a long time. I didn't learn anything like that. Oh. 18 years. It's, it's the same refrain that Phil had. I mean, you know, there's a lot of churches out there, but and they, they preach the gospel, but a lot of them don't teach. That's the truth. So. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came, Renee. You, you're a part of us in the beginning. We love you. Happy birthday to you. And your daughter Sarah, granddaughter Sarah's wedding was nice. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, you you always you shine for the Lord. Oh, no doubt. Well, she's been a witness. Give them... She's, are you Jewish? Excuse me, you Jewish? We love you, Renee. Yeah. It's coming, yeah. All right. Renee, we happy birthday. We love you. And Gigi, God bless you. Come on, Amen. We love you, Renee. She's the best. She's the best. We have, I don't think we have any nursery. Do we have nursery? Hey, Pauline, how are you? I, I would... 
Pray for you tonight. All right, we uh, no no nursery. So what we're going to do is just. Did everybody get a flyer? You got it back there. You guys got it. Flyer here, Bernie. Give the rest of these out. There's only a few there. Anybody to get a flyer for the meeting? You got. I gave it to you. No. Yeah. Oh. Joe. Thank you. And we'll get more. Okay, very good. Before we stand up and have a word of prayer, I'd like to introduce uh, a couple we met in Trader Joe's this week, who I had met his son years ago when I was teaching at International. Uh, you might remember, recognize Brother Grimball from Channel 12 News. Why don't you stand up, Brother Grimball, and your wife? Is Sue? Is it Susan? Susan. Yeah. Susan. Yeah. Mr. Kim, you guys recognize him? Yeah. Still recognize him in the parking lot. Yeah, hold, hold, stay up there, stand up there, stand there. Stay there. I want you to lead us, lead us in a word of prayer, please. All right. So good to meet other Christians here on Long Island, and we just ask you, Lord, that you'll be with the pastor today as he shares your word with us that he's that you have given him to present today. And we thank you, Lord, for your loving kindness always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, with that said, if you open your Bibles to Ezekiel 33, we're going to have a nursery dismissed right now, so we'll get started. Ezekiel 33. That was the granddaughter's name too, Nancy, Sarah. His, Renee's granddaughter. They got married, Sarah. Ezekiel 33, when you find that, you can stand up. Please. S'il vous plaît. Por favor. Ezekiel 33, if you can see the name of the message today on the board, could somebody tell me that? Be a doer. Very good. That's the name of the message. Be a doer. So we're going to read Ezekiel 33, start at verse 30. Read a few verses and then pray and expound. This is an expository message. Everybody get a chance? You got that? Ezekiel 33, 30. No more pages. We, then we're there. All right. Also, thou son of man... The children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses. And speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear my words, but they will not do them. For with their heart they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them a, as a very lovely song, as of one of them that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. And I say that in Jesus' name. Uh, let's pray, ask the Lord to touch again. And as Brother Grimball prayed, um, I'll just pray, the Lord, that you'd continue as he prayed, add to that, that you'd open our hearts and our minds to receive this message. And as the title is, Be a Doer, let us not just take these words in our heart, but let them reside there and effect a great change in our life that we might be a powerful witness to a lost and dying world. The world is getting darker by the day, and I pray that you help us to shine brighter. So give us the courage to go forth and be a good witness for you. In the meantime, speak to our hearts and encourage us now. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Be seated. So the first verse in verse 30, we'll start right there. Exposit this. The first, 30, first verse 30 says very clearly, 
uh, that they come, I pray you and hear what is the word that comes forth from the Lord. Look at the middle of the verse. Come. So the first point is come to church. Come. Come to church. Hey, it's a good thing to do. Come to church, right? Come to where there's going to be a meeting. Come to where the words of God are preached. Come to where you could be encouraged. You want to be where God's people are. And now the idea that you're coming to church, that is a good thing. Here's the thing that you've got to take away. Be a attendance. But don't just be in attendance, be attentive. So sit there, but get something from it. So don't walk out and say, that, you know, uh, yeah, that's good, but you want to get something from the word of the Lord. Here's the problem with Israel as Ezekiel's preaching. By the way, Ezekiel was called a post-exilic prophet. He was one of the prophets. After they're already gone captive by Babylon, God in his mercy was still trying to reach them. Don't give up. So even though the captivity happened, judgment already fallen in Israel, God still sends Ezekiel to continue to remind them about doing right. Even in their captivity. Even in your worst days, God will send a reminder to you to do right. Call back on the name of the Lord and get back to where you need to be. The problem with Israel, the problem with Christians today, is that when they hear the word of God, they didn't mix it with faith, and therefore it didn't profit them. So it says in Hebrews 4 too, not being mixed with faith, it did, the word did not profit them. So the word of God being preached is a great thing. You come to church, you hear the word of God preached. Amen? Amen. But if you don't mix with faith, it's just going to stay there. So you have to take it in and let it mix with faith in your heart so outwardly there could be a response from you to what you heard. Amen. It, the illustration would be... Uh, Preparing a cake, all right, yeah, yeah, which I, I, I'm not good at. I, I could cook, but I don't bake, all right? Uh, I leave that to other people, but I'll cook, not bake. But the baking, you have to follow instructions. I don't follow instructions when I cook. I just cook. <laughs> but you bake, you mix all the ingredients. Imagine mixing all the ingredients, right? A, I remember Carol, uh, Tom's wife, uh, your, Tom's same birthday as you. His wife, Carol, made the best cheesecake. You guys remember that? She made, an she made that an incredible carrot cake, I recall. But putting it together, mixing it, you mix all the ingredients together. Imagine just mixing it in the bowl, and you have all the ingredients for this great carrot cake or carrot cake or cheesecake, and it stays there. You mixed it up, but you didn't, you didn't put it in the oven, you didn't bake it. So it just stayed there. So it looks like it has the potential to being a great cake, but it'll remain in the bowl, and it'll be just that, ingredients in a bowl. You know, the word of God being preached is part of the ingredient you need. The other ingredient is faith. When the faith connects to the word of God being preached, the result in you is a profit. Amen. When you're in business, you want to be in business for a profit. As a Christian, you want to be a profitable Christian. You want to profit, and yet only you profit is let the word of God being preached mix with faith in your heart. So don't just hear it as God's words and say, oh, wow, I, I was a church head. That was a good message. Yeah, okay, take it and let it do something and affect a change in your life. That's how you will know you heard from the Lord. Amen. You'll change. Amen. Come to church. Great thing to do, come to church. Don't let it fool you, though, that hearing is the first. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't let it stop there. Hear and apply. We heard a, we saw a good uh, plaque the other day in that store. And I thought of you, Jim. Uh, make a, I got to take a picture. We should have taken a picture and show, you could make it. I know you could make it. But uh, I'm not going to ask you to make it. I was going to show it to you. But it was a plaque and it was really nice. It was like maybe this big, right? And it looked like an old barn look, like a door, a small door with the hinges on it. Really, really distressed wood look. Really nice, right? And it said, uh, prayer is the door to heaven, but faith opens, is the key. No, faith is the key? Prayer is the door. But faith is the key. Well, prayer is the door. I added to heaven. And faith is the key to open the door. You got that? Prayer is the door. Faith is the key. So you hear the word of God. You're hearing, you're praying, you hear all the right things. Faith is the key that unlocks it. And you got to put that key of faith in there and unlock it in your heart. Say, so open up my heart to faith that I could hear and apply it. I want to be a different Christian. 
Amen? Or it takes faith and it takes the word of God being preached. But the word preached did not profit then, not being mixed with faith. Let's look at something else. Look at verse 31. Same portion of scripture. So the first verse so, talked about come. By the way, it's a good thing you came to church this morning. Amen? Amen. That's a good thing. Don't ever mis misunderstand what I'm saying. That coming to church or even Ezekiel saying when they come, that's a good thing. Don't let it end there. Too many people have gone to church, sit there, and leave, and nothing changes. That's not good. Verse 31. And when they come unto thee as the, as the people cometh, they sit before thee as my people. Are you as people today? Can you say amen? amen? And they hear thy words. Are you hearing his words? Yeah. They, but, the, but don't let the but stop you though. Know. Get the but out in your life. But they will not do them. That, you don't want that part. For with the heart they show much love, but the heart goes after their covetousness. So in other words, what you want is to come, hear, and apply. Don't covet. Oh, you should covet something. You know what it says, the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians 13, but covet more earnestly, the better, more excellent way. In chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, which is considered the love chapter, ever hear that? You know it's not the love chapter, right? You know it's not the love chapter? It's the charity chapter. Come on. How long have you guys been around? It's a charity chapter. But any event, in any event, in chapter 13, 1 Corinthians, it, it goes through all the, it's explaining charity, all 13 verses. Then the next verse, Chapter 14, 1 says, but I'll show you a more excellent way. And the more excellent way was the charity. All right? It was better than any of the gifts. I'm sorry, the, all the gifts in chapter 12. It was talking about the gifts in chapter 12, 1 Corinthians 12. Then he says, after all these gifts, desire a gift. But here's a better way than all those gifts you could have is charity. Charity was better than all the gifts you could have. So you know why? You know, I thought about that. Why was charity, that's what it says in 1 Corinthians 13.1, at the end of chapter 12, it went through the gifts, all right, spiritual gifts, and at the end of the spiritual gifts, Paul says, but charity is greater than them all, is more excellent. Why is that? I'll tell you why. If you have a gift, do you have a gift? Come on, everybody has a gift. Okay, hold on, Robin, listen. Everybody has a gift. Problem is, sometimes you, don't, you just don't know what your gift is. <laughs> but you have a gift. And when you have that gift, and then you employ it for the use of the Lord, God will bless it. But whether you realize what your gift is or use it, God, listen to me, gave you that gift. And if God gave you that gift, all you could do is say, thank you, Lord. You say, thank you, Lord. You really take, can't take credit for the gift. You could thank him for giving you the gift. Now, what you can do, though, is by demonstrating charity which is the bond of perfectness, says in Colossians, bond of perfectness, and it covers a multitude of what? Sins. Sins. Charity is something you do. So it's something that you can actually take credit. If you're charitable, God will bless that. But the gift is something God gave you anyway. You know, it's strange. You see, like, these child prodigies, sometimes we'll... We saw somebody recently, some little child prodigy, uh, play and I forget where it was. And it was a gift. Because it wasn't normal that he just learned uh, to start playing at a young age. Um, there's so many stories like that that God just gifted. Or some people could just, you know, look at a blank wall and they, they imagine something and they create it. You know what I'm talking about, Mr. Kelly? Kevin, your, your son, right? He just sees something and he creates this whole thing in his mind. I mean, I, I don't understand that. You know, to me, I see a blank wall. <laughs> everybody's got a different gift and you, you use that gift that's a great thing but that gift God gave you you with me charity God didn't give you you have it in you to do and everyone has the opportunity to do that that's why it's more excellent so if you want to covet something don't covetousness you know covet not is in, 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 Ezekiel, in uh, Exodus 20 Ten Commandments. Number ten, do not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or anything they own. Don't, that's what it's one of the commandments. Don't covet that stuff. But what you should covet is a more excellent way. You should covet charity. Listen to me. You should covet a better prayer life. You should covet 
the understanding of the word of God better. You should covet being a better Christian. You should covet those things. That's a good thing to covet. If you covet that, you're coveting the right things. But don't covet that what the world has and living your life chasing this dream of you're going to be happy with this next thing. And you're going to be running after that for the rest of your life looking for happiness and you'll never find it. Because happiness and joy doesn't come from what you have. It comes from within. It comes from having a relationship with God. Amen. There's a great song we used to sing in Brooklyn. We don't sing it here too often. It was... Uh, Pastor Bob's father-in-law's favorite song, uh, you heard it for the first time when we were at the nursing home, when Patty and Tommy sang it, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Yeah. Pops, he loved that song. Oh. Just a he, we were at the nursing home recently, and Rob said, I said, Patty sang it. What a beautiful song. It is a great song. Just a Closer Walk. Covet that. Yes, covet Just a Closer Walk With Thee. Can somebody say amen? amen? That's a great thing to covet. Desire that you have a better walk with the Lord. Amen. Like he was saying on the tape last night, CD. You want to walk with the Lord. Covet that. Covet a closer walk. Covet a better prayer life. Covet more understanding in the scriptures. We've got a Tuesday night class coming up this week. Amen. So you could learn more and grow and, and then apply that knowledge probably. That's what you want to covet. When I got saved, I mean, my life changed and I just devoured the Bible. I wanted to read and learn and understand and be a witness. Just covet that. That's what I wanted to learn. Hey, my uncle taught Georgetown University, Ph.D., Shakespearean literature. I mean, that guy could read the Bible, understand every word in there, not have to look at a thesaur thesaurus or a dictionary. He just has it. But, but that didn't profit him because it wasn't mixed with what? Faith. Faith. As smart as he was, didn't profit him. I'm smarter than him. 100%, man. There's no doubt about it. I'm expounding, preaching my mother's funeral. He's sitting in the back, and my uncle, the genius, that we deferred to for everything when we were kids. Kazi, what's this word mean? What's that? He knew everything. He was a genius, you know. But the, 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 here he's sitting there like this. He was all bound up, you know. He, he, no, he was like in bondage. It was terrible. He, and I hadn't seen him in over 20 years. He wouldn't talk to my mother. My mother who wouldn't hurt a fly. He was, his pride was insulted about something. It was the eldest. Italians are bad. Boy, you, you, you didn't. You, yeah, man, you take, yeah, exactly, you, them Italians, you know what they do, they go like this. I mean, they do that, it's like, done, forget about it. The Irish, the Irish, they fight, and they make up. The Irish, they fight, they make up, and then they, they, they kill each other, and then they hug each other, I said, you guys are crazy. Italians, they go like this, hmm, get a ball. Finito. You're done, it's over, man. It's a miracle of God, your father got saved. He wanted to kill me in his deathbed, in his hospital bed to kill me sister. her sister too I know but you know the funny thing so what happens is that you, you go through those situations and my and, and my uncle now comes talk, tries to talk to my mom at the end of her life and she can't talk she's intubated and he wants to talk to her too late and then at the funeral when I'm preaching he's sitting back there and he came up to me afterwards and uh, he couldn't even talk he's a genius very, 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 very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, I, uh, daughters are lovely. I, I, I never met them. I never, I never met them. You, never, you, you ran away. You hid. I remember what I tell you. I tried to write. You ignored me. You ignored phone calls, everything. It didn't mix with faith. He had all the knowledge in the world. It didn't help him. By the way, he's got dementia now. You know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The more you know the Bible, I'm telling you, does anybody know what happened to Lucifer? Uh, Robin, please. You asked me before if you were being good, and I said yes. Now, don't let me have to change my opinion. Now, in Lucifer, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus said, I beheld Satan fall as what? Tell me. Lightning from heaven. You know what Lucifer was? He was the angel bearer of light. He rebelled and he became lightning. That's why the expression is light rejected becomes what? Lightning. Got it? That same light rejected by my uncle became lightning. Now he, the genius is losing his mind. I'm not making fun of the guy. I'm just saying he's got dementia. But to me, it's like it comes back to haunt you. When you turn your back on a lot of truth and you had the opportunity, it's terrible. We'll get to that in a minute. And it's a terrible thing. I mean, I love my uncle. He, he, he was like a big brother to us. He did everything with us. But at the same time, when the most important thing in life, he you know, didn't want to hear it. Now he's alone. Alone. That's the way they end up. They end up alone. 
covet the right things, church. Amen? Like they say, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Be walking close to thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. That's it. Be not be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Hear that? James 1.22. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Why deceiving you? If you're a hearer of the word only and not a doer, you're deceiving yourself because you're not applying the truth you're hearing. Don't deceive yourself. Let the truth affect you. Let it go in and make the changes. Listen, what you can't do as a Christian is look too far down the road. I warn against that all the time. Don't look too far down the road. None of us can predict accurately against the next five years of life. You can't predict who's going to win today's game. Right? You hope the Giants are going to win, but you don't know that. <laughs> I'm, we, I, I know the Jets aren't going to win, so I don't worry about it. <laughs> this is a different ball game. But here's the thing. I mean, I, so we, we make predictions, look down the road in our life, and we say, what's going to be five, five years? I have no idea what's going to be five years. Just live your life. Let the Word of God... Tri you know, we were talking the other day. My wife and I, we went to Northport. And it was a, we'd never been there. It was a beautiful little town. We walked around. It was nice. And we stopped the little shop, got some, talked to the young guy, gave him, the gentleman, gave him a track. And then we were talking and walking. And, you know, age came up. How old are you? And he was like, wow, you, you guys don't look that age. And, she, and Lord says, my wife says, it's all because of the Lord. The Lord preserves us. Yeah. But then she says to me later on, <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> how did we get to this age, man? Like, uh, how did we get here? Uh, it just seems like yesterday we, uh, I don't know, got kind of quick. It's a time, the older you get, you can, you can, you can identify with this, watch. Time is a strange element, isn't it? It's a dimension, dimension of time, but it's a strange dimension. Because here's the, watch this, when you're in it, raising young kids, come on mamas, it seems like it's forever, right? They're young and they're, they're sick and they're and you go to oh it's like forever. Then all of a sudden one day you look back and like where did that go? Where did it go? It goes by quickly. All I know is you can't predict the future. So live your life by faith and live it. Stay in the day, man. I go sermon to sermon. That, that's how I live. Sermon to sermon. I'm not kidding you. Sermon to sermon. And in the between, in between, I have some good meals and do my studies and hope my teams win. That's about it, you know. <laughs> I shoot some baskets with the kids. That's about, that's my life, you know. But thank, and I clean up. And I, I'm cost of carding. I'm always throwing stuff out. It, the, I saw a truck the other day. It says, uh, got junk? Oh, yeah. and they say, oh, I don't need a truck, got junk. I throw the junk out. <laughs> I can get a truck, got junk. Church, come, covet, the right things. Don't covet what he has or she has. I want this. I want and spend your life wanting that. And then realizing at the end of your life, what did it matter? If you ever want to hear a good testimony, hear Steve Jobs' testimony. Oh yeah, listen to it. You sent it years ago, Billy. That 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 he didn't I, I mean I don't think he got saved. I don't know that. But he, you hear him speak? You know, the co founder of Apple? Biggest company in the world, right? You know what he said? Yeah. You know what he says? He said at the end of his life, he was sick, dying. All his money couldn't heal his disease. And he's lonely, dying. He said, I spent my whole life attaining, going, getting, you know, amassing all this incredible wealth that we won't ever hear, understand a fraction of that. We could talk numbers, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I understand hundreds and thousands. I don't understand millions and billions. Does, do you? Hello? Maybe some of you do. I don't. I mean, I understand what it means, but I don't really understand that. So this guy understood that. He lived it. And at the end of his life, you know what he said? Didn't profit him. To an animal. Became an animal. Like, ah! He just had a half, and he just went, and he became this, this big behemoth apple which is the biggest corporation in the world. But he didn't 
realize then going after it, his whole life was spent to reach that pinnacle of success only to find himself dying with an incurable disease that he couldn't heal with all the best doctors and technology on his side. He couldn't change it. And it didn't profit him. And he said he wished he spent his life helping people in a different way. Amen. That's powerful. I don't have to wish that. I got to wish for some of the billions. That's about it. <laughs> I got that. Got the other stuff covered. Help me in Jesus' name. Look at something else. Look at verse, verse 31. 32, rather. 32. Now, this is an expository message. The other one was topical. Sojourner. Okay, look at verse 32. And lo, thou art unto... This is talking about Ezekiel. Thou art unto them, the thou is Ezekiel, them is Israel, as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. Like they recognized, wow, that was a great, you know, solo. That was a great song. That was a great sermon. That's what he's saying. Watch. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They comment. Come. Don't covet. Covet the right things and comment. They commented on the message. Now listen, that's a good thing. Don't misunderstand me again. You could say to me later on, Pastor John, I appreciate the message. That was a good message. And I'll say, well, praise the Lord. I'm glad it helped you. Amen? Amen? That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I hear a good message. That I preach. I said, praise the Lord, but I appreciate that. That was really good. Comment. They would hear what they were doing. Here's the context. They're commenting on uh, what Ezekiel's saying. And man, Ezekiel's a good preacher, man. He really put it out there. And they get up, they leave, you know what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing changed. Forget the comment on the message being good. Let it have the desired effect in your heart to change you. That's what he wants. See, Jonah preached the message, and he didn't really care what the comments were, because he just wanted to get God off his back, and yet there's a revival breaks out, and Jonah's not right with God to appreciate the revival. Where Ezekiel was right with God preaching even when they were in despair and they're saying, they're commenting that that was a great message and that's powerful. But they get up and they leave and nothing, listen to me, changes. You with me? Nothing wrong with commenting on the sermon saying, appreciate that message, brother. But more importantly, let it change you. Take the message to heart and leave and say, you know what? Meditate on it. Muse on it. Think about it during the week and Try to apply it to your life. The only way that's going to help is when you mix what you're hearing with faith to say, Lord, affect the change in me. Come on. That's what happens. I'm going to get to my closing point in a minute. But watch this. When, there's been so many messages over the years I've heard. I mean, I've preached a lot of messages, but I heard a lot of messages. And over the years, I've heard messages that helped form and shape me into who I am today. So when you hear messages, you should never forget them. Maybe not verbatim, remember them, but remember the gist or remember the import that God's trying to give it to you. Can you give me an amen? amen. That's important. We could get a hold of that because that's what, what you walk away. You're not going to remember all the words. I don't remember what I'm saying. I got to remember. Someone says, was a good, good message you preached last week? Billy said to me, I said, well, I don't know what I preached to a fan. He said, I don't remember, but it was a good one. <laughs> so, so I got to go look at my notes. I got to, I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, I have a good memory, but I forget. I said, well, uh, then I got to jog my If I remember the title, then I remember it. Then I got to look back. I'm like, oh, that, oh, yeah, I see it. But then the idea that you don't have to remember the words, but you remember the import. I took away something from that. Come on. That's what's good. You want to leave saying, Lord, thank you. That's good. Help me to get better. I don't want to. Here's the whole gist today. Come. Hear the words of God, okay? Coveted close walk with God, right? Desire, desire to, to learn more, grow, and be a better Christian. Change, that so he could change you. Otherwise, you come, you sit, you say amen, you get up, you leave, and nothing changes. It didn't profit you. Listen, you, we are Christians, and the world is dying for a lack of someone to tell them or be that light. Like Renee was, Renee, you, Believe me, Renee, you don't. You wore a cross. You didn't wear a cross. You could wear a yarmulke. It doesn't matter what you wore. You're going to shine for Jesus, okay? When you open your mouth and talk, they're going to hear Jesus in you because that's in your heart. Uh, you know, at the shower the other day, there was a great opportunity. I had to talk to some of the ladies there that were friends with Aaron. And Ava was busy doing her thing, serving and everything. And Bernadette had a great talk with them. They started asking faith, and then you talked. And that was a great thing. 
Then you gave a testimony later on. I heard a great, right? Yeah. But the point is, when you had the opportunity to, to give out the gospel in that little setting, they listened. Because it's in your heart. You don't have to have it. You don't have to have a plan. You don't have to have a pull out a note and script and read it. Just tell them what's in your heart. Amen. Tell them what you know. You know more than you think. Amen. If you're saved and you're coming to church for all, you know more than you think. Amen. And then if you don't know, don't go too deep. Just keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. <laughs> my trouble at the beginning was I would get too deep too quick. And I, I knew too much and it was like too much in my head. And I'm trying to throw it all out there. I'm like, man, I lost them after, you know, uh, the, the, the second sentence. Like, keep it. And I hear the Lord tell me, keep it simple. And then when you get, yeah, I, yeah I, thanks, okay, I got it. And then when, when I get an open ear and they want to hear more, then I'll drive the Mack truck through it. Mm. <laughs> Pour it in, they're open vessel, let them hear the truth. Otherwise, you know what, you, you can't waste too much energy and information on a deaf ear. Cast not thy uh, pearl before swine, lest they trample it in the foot. In other words, you can only do so much until they're ready to hear. Then when they're ready to hear, give it to them. Tell them. Amen? Amen. When, you know, when the, uh, listen, when the student is ready, the teacher will come. When you're ready, you know what? You'll find the teacher that God will give you. Praise the Lord. So to comment on scripture, I've had people say to me, Pastor, that was a great message. It's just what God, just what God needed to hear. You know? And it's good. You know, like, amen. Then I never see him again. <laughs> so I assume they're telling me the truth. Praise the Lord. That's a great message. I just don't need to hear. I never see the guy again. They took off. That's happened more than once. So, so if you say to me, great message today, stick around. Amen. <laughs> don't, don't leave. But the point is, you could say those things and really genuinely mean it. But then again, you don't let it change you. And you just go back to living your life the way you are. Th that's not going to help you idea is that we're here together to change, to grow, to learn, and appreciate good sermons. I'll give you a great, one of the greatest Bible illustrations. Keep your finger on Ezekiel 33, because we're going to come right back to close it up. But this is one you have to turn to. I want you to turn to Luke 23. Watch this. This is one of the greatest Bible examples of what I'm telling you found in the New Testament with our Lord Jesus Christ. It's unbelievable how well this fits. Look at Luke 23, verse 8. Luke 23, verse 8. Now watch this. You want to talk about something that... doesn't make sense? Something that is really paradoxical? You can look, find it right here. Watch this. Luke 23, 8. And when Herod... Herod... saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad... For he was desirous to see him of a long season, watch this, because he had heard many things of him, and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Church, hello, Herod didn't care about the truth. Herod didn't care about Jesus. Herod's going to eventually put him to death. Turn him over, turn him over to Pilate. I don't want to hear about it. But Herod was excited to see him because he heard all the great miracles he did and he won. He was desirous to see him work a miracle. He wanted to see a religious show. He wanted to see something that he couldn't explain. Wow, I saw Jesus work a miracle. Now crucify him. I don't care. Are you kidding me? You know what that is? That's exactly what we're talking about. Come, they hear, they appreciate, and then they don't change. It didn't change him. Are you with me? Herod was a half Jew. And he was, he was a great builder. He was interested in that. He was interested in, 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 in truth. It's almost like Pontius Pilate. The first message I ever preached when you were there. And Renee and Rosie and Mommy. First message was called Pilate's Predicament. I couldn't tell you the particulars, but I remember the name. But here's what I, could, I do remember about that. It was Pilate. You know Pilate recognized there was no, Jesus was innocent? Three times? I find no fault in him. Come on, right? Pilate knew he was innocent. So does Pilate get a pass? No. 
He doesn't act on that truth. Even though he knows he's innocent, he still say he sends them off to be crucified, whips them, condemns them, and then hopes his plan works by them picking Barabbas. Instead, instead they pick Christ. I mean, they're picking Christ. Instead, they pick Barabbas to release Barabbas. And he's like, oh my gosh, my plan failed. But he knew he was innocent. He knew the truth. The truth didn't help him. You with me? Church, listen, you know the truth? Let it set you free. Let it change you. Don't just take the truth in and say, well, this is the truth I learned. Let it think, think about that. Let it change you. That truth will set you free. Truth will change you. It didn't change Pilate. It didn't change Herod. And it didn't change Israel that heard Ezekiel preaching. But it'll change you when you let it affect your life the right way. You know, many times you hear a message and you know it was for you. And I don't say that facetiously when someone said that to me or have said that over the years that's just what I need to hear and I know it's true I don't that's because that's the Lord speaking to everybody amen? amen they'll say that message is for me you know what I usually say well amen brother but it's for everybody amen. like it's for everybody if you got something specific specific out of it amen that's why you're here but the, the message is designed to reach everybody that's why a lot of words are spoken and a lot of verses are given because it's good it's like shotgun you're going to get it amen it's buckshot. You're going to get a hold of something. Amen? So get, get it in and change. Don't let it just say, okay, that was, I don't want to be like Israel to hear it and walk out and leave. Let it change you. We still remember that night in Connecticut. We heard that message that Brother Leek preached. He passed away a year and a half ago on Easter Sunday, resurrection morning. What an appropriate day to go back to the Lord on, on the resurrection Sunday. And a couple of year and a half ago, he did that. And, uh, I had, I had a relationship with him via pen pal. We'd write letters to each other. He was older. He didn't travel anymore. And I had seen him, seen him preach many years ago. And I, th that was it. That was the message I needed to hear that night. And that, that message, what he spoke, it was the Lord speaking to me that night that allowed me, by the power of God, to take that old call and just surrender. I went into my, listen, I walked into my boss's office the next day. All right? I mean, I was a principal in the company. I was a partner. I was, I was doing really well. And I mean financially. And I walked in and, you know, I used to witness to him, the Jewish guy. He came to church here a couple of times. You guys, some of you remember him? Yeah. Got yeah. yeah. the law and he, he calls me. Giuseppe, pray for Giuseppe. He called me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Yeah, I did pray for him. At any rate, I go and tell him I'm leaving. I'm going I'm I'm to give you two weeks notice. I'm leaving. And he gives me a big hug. Giuseppe. Listen, what are you going to, are you going into the priesthood? <laughs> He's Jewish. I said, well, something like that, Eric. <laughs> and then he says, well, listen, I wish you well. You, you, you'll do very well. But if you ever, uh, listen, to, if, if you ever need to come back, come back. I said, Eric, you come back, come back. You come back. There's a space for you. Thank you, Eric. I didn't go back. Amen. In other words, I heard a message and it, God had been brewing in my heart. And at that moment, I made a decision. And I went forward it, and here it is today, many years later. I'm glad I didn't go back. Don't turn back. Let's look at one last one. Go back to Ezekiel 33. I told you to keep your finger there. Put a little bookmark there. Hopefully you did that. Otherwise, find it. Ezekiel 33, one last verse. Let's look at this. Verse 33, and this is going to... This is going to hit it right here. Watch. Verse 33 says this. And when this cometh to pass, lo will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Everybody see that verse 34? All right. What's the last verse? The last point. I didn't have room on the board. I'm going to tell you what it is. They can't say they weren't told. Come. Don't covet the wrong things. The, exactly. The right excuse. Come. Don't covet the wrong things. And make a comment. But don't just make the comment. Let it change you. And finally. Can't say it didn't hear. Can't say they didn't were warned. Can't say they didn't know. The world is in trouble. I'm churched. I can't be any more plain and direct. I'm not saying you're in trouble. I'm saying the world's in trouble. If you're saved, say amen. amen. 
You don't even appreciate, you really don't, maybe some of you do, not everybody, don't really appreciate what it is that you have. Because when that world, the, the trouble that's going to befall this world, you will escape that. I know when you're young, you don't want to hear about the rapture because you have dreams. Oh, have dreams. Live your life. I'm not telling you not. Live it. Enjoy. Go, do all you can do. But listen, when that trumpet sounds, I don't know when it's going to sound. But I do know it will sound. Just like he said, lo, it'll come to pass. Noah built the ark. When Noah built that ark, don't tell me how long he built it. You don't know how long it took him to build it. I read the Bible more than you. It's not in there. Trust me. You cannot tell me how long. I don't care if it was 10 years or 100 years. He built it all. That I know. Amen. I know how they get the, arrive at these numbers. You can't prove it. All right, here's what happens. So they, yeah, I got it. They, they build it. He's 600 years old. It goes in the ark, right? How long, how long, if someone here's a trivia question. How long from the day he finished that ark? Got on. To the day he stepped, listen, to the day he got off. What's a year? No, it's a Gentile year. 360 is Jewish year. But it's close. Very close. 360, my wife says. Do I have another guess? Three seven. Three se no, 375. No, 370. 370 days. Why? I'm just telling you. I don't know. It's 370 days from the day he got on that boat to the day he literally got off. A year. 370 days. To be exact. Prior to that, he's building this ark for a long time. Building it in the middle of a desert. It had never rained. And they're making fun of him. By the way, the Bible doesn't record one message that Noah ever preached. Right? Oh, but he's a preacher of righteousness. See, my wife's a good Bible reader. She knows it. She knows all my punchlines. <laughs> but watch this. Yeah. He's building the ark, and he's a preacher of righteousness, the Bible says in Hebrews, but he never records the message he preaches. Because the message he preaches was because he was a doer of the word. Not a hearer only. He heard the Lord say, build the ark. He said, okay, Lord, I will. How big? And he told him and he gave dimensions. And he built the thing. He did his testimony via his hands. And he did the, what God wanted him to do. And as he did that, he was preaching to the world. Why are you building a boat? Because he's going to flood you out and I'm going to be saved. You're crazy. It's never rained before. Call me crazy. Call me old. Call me nuts. I don't care. I'm doing what God wants me to do. But when that flood comes, and lo, it'll come. What did it say? Verse 34. What does it say? Lo, it'll come. Mm -hmm. When it comes past, parentheses, lo, it'll come. They knocked on that door. You know what they were doing? Let me in. Let me in. No, no, let me in. Shut the door. The Lord shut the door. Boom. The Lord shut. Did you ever read that? Lord shut the door. Got in. How could he shut the door? He got, got in. Lord shut it. When the Lord blows that trumpet, people are going to look for you. I knew you were a Christian. Where are they? Where'd they go? Oh, is that that thing he told me about? Oh my gosh. What's going to happen now? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Let's turn here and then we'll close it up. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Give you a chance to find that. Look at verse 10 and 11. And we'll stop there. We'll close it up there. Can't say they won't warn. And listen, the idea when you warn somebody by giving them the gospel, you're not, you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to judge them. You're trying to help them. Right, church? If you give a gospel track out, you invite somebody to church, you're trying to help them. I thought that was a good gesture you do with your neighbor. With, with the cheesecake. And that was really good. I mean, that, that, you know, how could you go wrong with that, Right? Cheesecake, give them a couple of tracks. You buy so that's a good thing you did. That's a good thing. Praise the Lord. And you know, you never know what that might come along. You, typically, when they moved in our house, my wife would always make that apple cake she made and give it to the neighbors and always talk to them. I've witnessed all the neighbors; they all know. So, and uh, some's here right now. <laughs> Amen. George and all of them. Tommy, not Tommy. The one before that, Jamie prayed to be saved with me. Did you know Jamie? Yeah. He prayed with me to be saved. Yeah, Tommy, no, I talked to him and Stephanie and Tiffany a little bit, but, you know. 
and the new couple, I don't know that well yet, uh, Anthony and uh, the wife, I don't know her name. But the, the little, two little boys, they played, the cute little kids, yeah. I talked talking to them, little, they moved in recently, we're getting to know them. But the point is, you let them know, and you know, and the idea that they, they might actually get saved and change your life, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, Noah warned the people, they didn't listen, Jesus warned the people. Here's the Lord in himself, in flesh, warning his own people, Israel. He says that if you had known the time, as a, I, I cry over Jerusalem as a, as a mother hen wants to put the chicks under the wings, and you would not, you wouldn't, you didn't discern the right time. And here's the Lord of glory in flesh, and they reject him. I mean, they didn't accept that warning, so some will accept it, some won't. You never know. You're, you're, you're ones up there in Canada, you talk to Jim, your, your relatives that you've witnessed to and try to talk. You, you, you keep putting the seed out. You don't know who's going to get it, who's not going to get it. Some of the family, some friends, you don't know who's going to respond. You try. You put it out and you pray that they get it. Because if it really changed you, you want to see it change them. Amen? So they, they can't say they weren't warned. And I'll tell you this. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we'll read verses 10 and 11. This is a great, powerful verse, but it's dangerous. So pay attention. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, watch, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be what? See, when you reject being saved, you don't know what you're doing. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Church, that's dangerous. That's a scary portion of Scripture. They didn't receive the truth that they would be saved, God's going to send them a strong delusion that they will believe a lie. Do you, do you know what he's talking about? Well, I'm going to tell you. After the rapture occurs, this is 2 Thessalonians, rapture takes place in 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, all right? Rapture took place, right? Mm -hmm. Devil is going to ascend to the throne, pretend to be God. The world's going to wonder after him. He's going to work signs and wonders and miracles called fire down from heaven. The whole world's going to believe that this is the true Messiah. But they will have lost, the real Christians have gone. So there's not going to be a witness to tell them except those 144,000 Jews running around the world. And either they get it or they don't. But they're going to, if they reject the truth, and then God's going to send them strong delusion, they believe the lie. They're going to believe the lie that this is the Messiah and he's the false Messiah. The world's going to accept him, the wrong guy, as the right guy, and make a bad decision and plunge the world into darkness. Now, that's a sad thought, but it's biblical, and that's what's going to happen. It won't affect you. If you're saved, you won't be here. And others that will be here after you're gone will get saved. Plenty get saved. Plenty get saved. Read Revelation chapter 7, you'll see. But the point is this, why wait for that? Why wait? Get it while you can get it. It's a free gift. It's not an earned reward. Accept the Lord. If you've never done that, ask the Lord to save you. It's a free gift. He will give you that if you accept it. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. If you get a hold of that, it'll change your life. But if you wait until the rapture hits and we leave and then you panic and you want to get saved, oh, you could still get saved, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. And you might have to pay for it with your life. So why wait for that? I don't want to wait for that. Want, who wants to be a hero? He, Jesus was the hero. He did it. All you got to do is, he, all he wants you to do is say, accept him. Save me, Lord. That's all it takes. You say, Lord, save my, hey, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Just call upon the name of the Lord. Say, Jesus, Lord, I'm a sinner. You're the Savior. Save my soul. Forgive me. You don't have to understand theology or doctrine. Lord, save me. I, I don't want to die and go to hell. Amen. That's what it takes. I prayed with Bruce's friend one day in Stony Brook Hospital. I don't know. One of Bruce, Bruce was a great witness. He talked to everybody. Even back in the day when Bruce was himself not right. But he was witnessing people. So he says, Pastor, I can't deal with this guy anymore. Go deal with him. He's dying. I forget his name now. I'm a Stony Brook. And, and we went, I went up there to visit the guy. And man, I'm telling you, he was in, he was in bed. And he, he wasn't in ICU, but he was in bad shape. And he didn't have long to live. That's, and he was young. I don't even know what he had. I, I, I just know that I was on a mission. And uh, I said, I'm from Bruce. I'm his pa oh, yes, uh, Pastor Joe, I heard about you. We talked and this and that. After 15 minutes dealing with the guy, do you want, do you want to pray to be saved? He says, yeah, I do. So I go to hold his hand and pray. He goes, no. He gets out of bed. He goes, I want to kneel down. 
So make sure that sheet's closed behind you, would you, okay? <laughs> so he, he gets out of the bed, he kneels down. I knelt down next to him, and the nurse walks in, you know, and she walks back out. I'm praying with the guy on the floor, and he prays. I think maybe a month or two later, he died. But Bruce was so happy that I made it to reach this guy and got saved. Amen? You never know what it's going to take. But he got a hold of it before he died, and that's a good thing. Don't wait for that time. Get it while you can get it, and live for the Lord. Bible, you know what the Bible ends with? Bible ends in Revelation 22 with Jesus, and he says, I mean, John saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. Revelation 22, 20, verse 20. Even so, come Lord Jesus. You know, that's a prayer. That's a good prayer. You could say, even so, come Lord Jesus. The world, as it's getting worse and darker, the devil's unleashing his minions and unleashing his spirit without mitigation. And it's going out. And as it's doing that, it's influencing more people and damning more souls. So when I say, even so call Lord Jesus, it's a prayer of mercy yeah. to end, the, end this madness and get us out of here. In the meantime, for those that aren't saved, it's an opportunity to get saved and trust the Lord. Hey, Lord might linger for many more years. I don't know. But maybe he won't. But why, why, why run that risk? Get saved. Ask the Lord to save you. If you've never done that, cry, cry out to his name. He'll save you. The thief on the cross had no opportunity to do anything. He's dying. He's dying. And he says, Lord, Jesus, remember when you come into your kingdom. He says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That was instantaneous. And the moment you cry out to God out of a pure, sincere heart, God will hear your prayer. So even so, come Lord Jesus. With that said, let's stand up and we'll close on that thought. Come to church. Hear the words of the Lord. Don't covet anything other than a closer walk with God. You want to comment on the scriptures or comment on the message, go right ahead. But don't leave it there. Let it affect your life. And finally, when you were witnessed in a testimony, they can't say they weren't warned. And you pray that they only receive that warning, not just to be warned, but to change. So Ashley, whatever you'd like to play, please do so. I'd appreciate that. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I don't want you to talk to anybody right now. Just meditate and think about what God has spoke to you about during a sermon. The altar is open. If you have an opportunity, you want to come down and pray, please do so. Talk to the Lord. If there's anybody here that has never trusted Jesus as their Savior, it's a free gift. It's not an earned reward. It's not something you have to do other than cry out, Lord, save my soul. If you're not sure if you're saved, if you were to die tonight, if you know you go to heaven, if you don't know that, why don't you come down and pray? And talk to me or talk to somebody. They'll lead you to the Lord. Anybody here like that need to come down and pray? How about you, you Christians? Come on, Christians. You come down and pray. Ask the Lord to help you be a changed vessel. Don't be ashamed. Get out of your pew. Come on down and talk to the Lord. While Ashley plays, you come down to this altar and pray. We'll tarry in prayer for a few minutes. You give you an opportunity to respond to what the Lord's talked to you about. Don't leave church if you have some issues you need to get resolved, church. Come talk to the Lord. I'm telling you, it's never more important time than right now. Come talk to the Lord. Which one? Yeah, perfect. That's good. That's good. We should be good. Two or three at most. Two or three. We'll see.
Let's all stand up. Just got to go in here. Is your only altar? Ready for testimony? Yeah, yeah. Is your only altar? Yeah, good. Let's pick that one out. Let's open up our hymnals to 381. Is your all on the altar? Amen. There you go. Singing verses one and two. You have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly, fervently prayed. But you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the altar is laid. Is you all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. Walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment always. You must do His sweet will to be free from all ill. On the altar your all you must lay. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart has the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul. standing for a minute. Anybody? No, no, no. Let's see if anybody has a word or a testimony they'd like to give to church. Sometimes after a service like that and you hear something, I guess deep, you know, and you meditate on it a little bit. It takes a while to digest it. You want to say something? Billy, you got something to say? Yes. Instead of what's really important, and that's, and even recently I've had some issues and stuff, and I can tell you that feels hard to me. Or I can put this right and really do what God wants me to do. I was in the bank in Rocky Point about six weeks ago uh, that I should go in front of the new young girl there, and uh, she happened to be Korean. But once I had my question, she's not to be a friendly person. For some reason, that's what it is. I go up to her, and the first thing she says is, What a beautiful shirt. And she starts talking to me. Well, before I left okay. there, I can't tell you, I started telling her about Jesus. And I said, do you know about how much you love her? She goes, no, tell me. Wow. This is a young girl, man. She wants to know about it. Yeah, wow. I was in uh, a place in Center Ridge last week, and I did it. It just so happens. I happen to have a bunch of videos I bought about um, about the end fund. That's a, a series that I, the one I really like. You play the video with the guy told you, the last chance I had. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The one with Jesus is the is the waiter. The, you're right, right, the, the, right. Right. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's getting. It's, it is incredible. Yeah. That's right. No, that's right. That's right. Amen. Good, good. You know, we bumped into uh, uh, Brother Grimball, Ken and his wife Sue at Trader Joe's this week. And it was just, we were just, you know, shopping and um, we bumped into him. And how did we start talking? Did you? No, I recognized that. Oh, you're the guy from Yeah, there it is. And then we started talking. Yeah. And then I reckon I knew I met your son when I was up in International, and we talked. And then uh, um, uh, Heather Rubino was there, and she, they were all having this little Christian fellowship in, in Trader Joe's. You, you never know. You know who you, and I, I actually didn't. I always have my business cards on me. Did not have one on. I have a short on. I always I, I never called him your track, and my wife, thank God, had a track, and we were able to give it to him. But he saved many years. But this way, he had my address information. You guys made it, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody else have something to say? Did you have a good visit with your son when you went to Canada? It was beautiful, really. Good. I had a beautiful time, and he's up in the woods in the moon. He's like uh, 30 miles from, from Poppy. Wow. Hmm. Way, way out. Hmm. Wow. All right. Well, I'm glad you had a good visit. Yeah, Anthony, I'm glad you made it home. Keep Anthony in prayer. Give him an amen. Doing okay, buddy? Good, good. Anybody else got something to say? same when you're watching it from the tomb. Yeah, right. But I did uh, get a lot of good stuff. But my heart was here. You are not doing better. Good. I just want to say the shower was really nice that we had yesterday that Ava put on for uh, Aaron. And she gave a little talk to people that were there that weren't safe. And just what a difference mm -hmm. with a, sh a, a shower that's just kind of secular and one that's Christian. Yeah. We have something to offer. Amen. Mm -hmm. And just the things that you said are not heard today. It's very, I'm sure there was some shock in it that, you know, about the things that we tell about the Bible that the world doesn't know. Right. And just was just, I said, you know, you know, because showers are generally very boring. <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't boring. <laughs> and that was, it was just a blessing. Aaron had friends there that didn't know the Lord. And the witness went out. And, you know, just to hear about training children God's way. And it was just, you know, you could see they were riveted. And like, you know, and to give out the gospel, it's just... Uh, one of them, Tanya, you can pray for her. She wants to come to church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tanya? So, yeah. Good. She wants help with her child. Yeah. Good. So it was just a real blessing. Just to use your home for Christ's mm -hmm. um, word to go out in, in, in a shower. It was wonderful. Uh, Peter, I know you recently lost your dad. How are things hanging in there? Yes, thank you. Okay, family's right? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, why don't you close the word of prayer? Right. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word and for the truth we learned today. 
Uh, thank you, Lord. I, I, I thank you for bringing my family here, Lord, and guiding us here to the church uh, and what a family it is here. Thank you for the pastor and his wife. And I just pray, Lord, that we heed your word and to leave here, as our good brother said, and in the testimonies we heard, that we tell others about you and your salvation and a home and eternity in heaven. Thank you again, Lord, um, and help us to, to always, Lord, to do right and to be closer to you and to grow more into to like Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.